Okay, my name is Gina Sian. I'm very excited to welcome all of you. Uh, obviously, you came hungry today also, not just for learning, but also for food. So, <laughs> have no fear, we'll be ordering some of the breakfast items, and you can also fill your belly as you fill your minds, and hopefully your spirit and inspiration today. I manage the ASK program, the Alumni Sharing Knowledge Program, uh, here at DePaul University. I see many new faces, and I hope you keep coming back. We do do this every month, from September to June. A lot of excellent topics. We can find our schedule in the back. Um, and we bring in different speakers, particularly our alumni, especially if you're ASK mentors. So let me take a moment to at least tell you about us. Uh, the ASK program is part of the Career Center. We have a, a network of over 1,200 mentors. They can talk to you about your career, uh, they help you prepare for job interviews, and just kind of pass along the lessons they learned along the way. They were in your shoes at some point, uh, navigating their career path, and they can share their lessons with you. Let me briefly bring up our website, and then I'll introduce our speaker to you. I'm sure you're eager to learn how to uh, be awesome. Uh, Ask.thepaul.edu is our website. It has all the information on, on how to meet our mentors. You can search the directory if you're a student um, or an alum. You have full access to our directory. There are different uh, career areas, and many of them are here today. And we also do practice interviews. So if you have an internship uh, coming up, interview, or a job interview, I encourage you to practice with us. Make your mistake with us before you go to a recruiter. And we have a number of prearranged slots that you can see if it matches your availability, and you can just sign up. For the sake of our speakers and also uh, for you guys, to those in the room, let's just kind of do a quick poll. How many of you are ASK mentors? There's a lot of people here are ASK mentors, and our speakers are ASK mentors as well. How many are alum but maybe not quite ASK yet? I invite you to please join us and be ASK mentors. Um, it's a great experience, I think, and I'm sure the mentors will share that with you. Graduate students, how many graduate students? How many undergraduate students? As always, it's always a mix of uh, faculty, staff, alumni, undergrad, and grad, so I'm sure our speakers can handle this mix, um, but I encourage you to keep coming back with us. You can see there's a lot of different group of people who attend our events. Let me move over and share a little bit more about our speakers. You've seen their bios in your uh, invitations, in our announcements. They're fantastic people. I won't share the boring stuff necessarily about them, but Rajiv and Martin are both great mentors. They do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching through ASK, but also through their own professional and personal life, particularly in really getting out of your comfort zone. It's really pushed them to open up this idea lemon. I'm sure they'll talk a little bit more about it. They're also proud alumni, very active in the marketing department. They're marketing alum. I think they're one year apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2010. 2011. So. A lot of uh, great advice that they're going to hear, you're going to hear from them. So now I'm going to use Rajiv Nathan and Mark McGovern. Thanks, guys. So um, the art of awesome, which is a concept I think you guys have a little bit of interest in considering you're here, um, is something that Martin and I have come up with over the past, I'd say, two or three years, um, ever since we respectively graduated college. Um, I say it's a concept because it's something that we're always iterating, always working on, and always implementing into our own lives. And it kind of came out of two very different backgrounds. Yes, we both went to the hall, we were friends at the hall, um, we were part of the student marketing organization, um, and we both graduated with jobs. But um, in my situation, I went into a job coming out of college that, quite honestly, was an awesome company I had an awesome gig there. What I found was that there was still something missing in my life, and I wanted to figure out how to attack what was missing. For me, it was an awesome job, surrounded with awesome coworkers, doing awesome work. I'm using the word awesome. Uh, Which we will. Yeah. <laughs> A lot. But I kind of found that in my personal life, I was just kind of doing the same things over and over again that I did for four years of college hanging out with the exact same friends, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing, but we were going to the same bars and staying in the same group of people. And I kind of had this desire to branch out and see what else was out there. Versus uh, Martin's, I think, experience coming into this is much different. 
Yeah, and, and going off what Raj said, one of the interesting things is we all watch Friends, we all watch Seinfeld, we, we think that these you know, tight-knit groups are really what help us grow and have fulfilling lives, but it is about pushing those boundaries, finding people that will challenge you, and really going above and beyond. Because if you look at Friends, we've gone, what, 11, 9 to 11 years or something, and they're still in the same apartments, dating the same people, over and over again, not really ever <coughs> moving forward. And so one of the things that I noticed after graduation, I was working at a great company, but it really wasn't a good fit with my personality. It was very corporate, uh, it was in the suburbs. Um, I, I really like stimulation, I like being in the city. So after a while, I started kind of being very down on myself, not understanding why I wasn't keeping in touch with friends and different things of that sort. And once I made the jump and went back to the city and started making some pretty serious moves, such as leaving my career and taking six months to transition into a new industry. Um, it really pushes you to go out, find the people that really matter in your life, talk to them seriously about the things that you need to improve, and then in so doing, you really do start to build your brand and start to build your presence and start to build what it is that you're working toward to you know, show the world you're awesome. Because we're all awesome. As, as you said earlier, you're not here to learn how to be awesome, you already are, and we're just trying to help you really drill down into what it is about you that is unique and interesting and can make good stories, and then using that to find the right people in your life and set the right goals in order to have a brand that people admire. All right. So, uh, you want me to the, uh, a lot of presentations we have been to, uh, get to the end of them, and then we're like, well, what was the actual point of the whole thing? So we want to make sure up front, we're giving you three things we want you to walk away with uh, by the end of this time. The first one is merging. We all have a lot of different interests, and we all have a lot of different groups of friends, and we all have a lot of different things that we do in our personal time. And it's very easy to become siloed or to try and keep those things separate. And one of the things that we've learned over the past few years is Trying to keep all those things separate not only drives you crazy because you're having to choose between different groups of people or different activities or my job over my hobbies or things of that sort, but it also makes it very difficult to use them to feed into one another and really find the common strengths across all the different things you do. So for instance, I am part of the American Marketing Association and every other week I host a thing called the Launch Pad where I just open the doors of our old office and say, anyone who wants to can come and show up, talk about if you have an interesting idea or if you have something you're struggling with at work or if you want to go into learning about your personality type or whatever it is that the, the topic of the day. Uh, come, bring it to the group, and we'll all sit around and just kind of discuss it. It's how do you apply marketing theory to improve your lives? And I used to keep that very separate from my day-to-day -day job. So I'd always feel guilty, you know, leaving to go do that, or, or kind of, you know, feeling like I'm not spending enough time on one thing or the other, or prioritizing things incorrectly, until the day when I met with one of the leaders of my company and asked, what can I do to help bring in business to our company? And her answer was to get out there, meet people, and establish yourself as someone who's good at marketing. And I said, well, I'm already kind of doing that with these other groups that I have. Can we merge this and use our office space? And so now I don't have to travel across the city to go meet this group. They come to my employer's office. And so it really brings these two worlds together and now I've got people in my office coming to the meetings. I've got you know my boss on the email list, different things of that sort. And it really starts to help everything magnify each other instead of keep things separate. Um, on top of that, I'm sorry, just disclaimer. Uh, if you guys have questions as we're talking, please interrupt, no, interrupt us. Or um, yeah, and that, that's a great example. I think another thing uh, that works really well is just taking different interests that you have and finding ways to lay it on top of one another. So like for me, I knew I wanted to get into photography, but I also really love travel. So then I looked at how can I use travel as a way to work on my photography because there's only so many times I can take pictures of the same building in Chicago. So last year, I broke out the gear and I said, where are the places I want to go in the U.S.? Where do I want to go internationally? And I basically structured it so that every three months I was going to at least one place, traveling to at least one place, uh, mostly domestic, but I also go to Costa Rica. Uh, and I looked at it in, in terms of how can I let each 
different place, work on a different part of photography, so that I can practice my own photography skills and figure out what area am I best at or what area do I am I drawn to most out of photography? Do I like nature or do I like cities or do I like take pictures of people? That thing. And when you start to think in terms of how can you stack and layer your different interests over one another, as Mark said, you're able to uh, magnify or amplify the things that you're doing instead of keeping them aside. And what's interesting is we're not trying to take everything in our life and necessarily make it our job. But we are trying to take all of our interests and use them to enhance whatever it is that we do the most each day, right? There's only so many hours in the day, so if you are someone who's very interested in photography, but maybe not someone who wants to be a photographer, it doesn't mean that learning photography and getting those skills and showing people in, in, in the rest of your life that you can do this won't enhance something else. So for instance, um, I'm, we're both into photography and I've taken a lot of pictures online and, and done you know, Instagram to a fair degree. And one of the things that I've noticed is that now I'm just taking all those images that I've gathered over the past few years, and I'm putting them into the email blasts that we're sending out. And it's, it's, it's a little different than what you would normally get, like a stock photo of someone. I was actually gonna put a stock photo of photography in here, just to be funny, but uh, we decided to go a little more cartoony route with it. But what's funny is that when you send out these emails, a lot of people get the same emails every single day, right? It's just a whole bunch of text that goes on forever and says, go buy my product. Versus, um, you know, MailChimp has a new product right now, which is called MC Snap. And all it does is it takes a picture from your Instagram and you write a very short blurb. And, I mean, talk about personal branding, I mean, the picture really doesn't even have anything to do. It's like a cool spill from Mexico. but. All of a sudden, I've got a click rate that's you know 45 percent versus what I had the week before, which is like two percent. So it's a very interesting um, way of pushing your interests and and kind of jarring people out of their normal day-to-day -day routine, which is something that we're really going to talk about in this presentation. Concept two is about surrounding yourself with the right people. Uh, we kind of talked about it a few minutes ago, but. Uh, the Friends Seinfeld uh, structure, it's not like, I love Seinfeld and I love Friends, but look at where they ended up. <laughs> Seinfeld ended up with the same four people going to jail. Not that that's going to happen with your friends. And having the same conversation they had in the first episode. Right, and they just, and the kind of, the, what's funny about the show is they just pour over the minutia of everyday activities, but if you stick to the same group you were with, you know, all your life, and I'm not saying disown your friends by any means, but work to get yourself out there and meet new people and find the people you can surround yourself with that are constantly going to challenge you. Yeah, and, and especially the ones that will support you too because we all have these great ideas, right? And we'll be like, oh my God, I'm so excited about XYZ thing that I'm interested in doing. And you'll have that one downer friend who just goes, really, really bad? Or like, oh yeah, this guy's already doing it. Like the whole Simpsons did it mantra, right? And it's like, well, just because someone else has done it doesn't mean that your voice is going to be any less important. And so, kind of, you, you only have so much time in the day, so you have to find the voices that will enhance your days. Um, not to ignore all the other voices, but find the ones that enhance versus detract. The last one is evolve. Using the knowledge that you have of merging, uh, merging your interests, merging what you want to get involved in, and surrounding yourself with the right people, it's important to constantly evolve. That's why I said at the, at the top of this, the art of awesome is a concept. It, it's just that, it's a concept because it's something that we are always looking at in our own lives. It's something that is constantly being iterated based on our experiences. And we came up with a baseline based on about two or three years of experience, but that's not to say that every single thing we say is step by step. Like, evolution is about challenging what you already know. So. The more you push your boundaries and push your borders, uh, the more that you will learn, the more that you will grow. And I took a yoga class um, about a year ago, and I, I thought it was really interesting what the teacher had said during this class. She said, everyone here, everyone is here today for a similar reason. You all want to relax, you all want to get a little exercise, things of that sort. Um, and one thing that's different about yoga is no one is here to like win, right? They're there for their internal purpose. And she said something, she said, 
yoga isn't a uh, competition. There isn't an end game. There isn't like oh, here. Here's I'm I'm now yoga. Like that's not a thing. So it's just a lifelong practice, and that's the way she approaches it. Every day she wakes up and she does yoga, and she teaches yoga, and she continues to practice yoga. She's never going to be perfect at yoga. There will always be something to change and something to evolve and something to grow. And if you take that concept of your brand is not a finite thing, it's not your LinkedIn page, it's not your Facebook, it's not that one thing that I put on my resume three years ago, it is a constantly changing new inputs every day growth. And when you take that sort of practice mindset to it, you can really start to explore all the different facets of your brand and see, again, where those things connect and how they connect to each other. So, let's play a little bit of spot the difference. On the left, we have Dwayne Johnson, AKA The Rock. And trust him, he's been watching wrestling. Yeah, I'm a huge wrestling fan. Right. <laughs> On the right, we have Mr. Hulkamania, Hulk Hogan. There is one <coughs> major difference about both of these guys. Not for the same to level of tan, but uh, <laughs> that's the way. Yes, they are both, or were both, wrestlers. Hulk Hogan is going on 70 years old now, and he still has to rely on wrestling to feed himself, to be his platform to do something, to put himself out in front of people. The Rock. He started out as a football player at the University of Miami. Professional football didn't work out so well for him. So then he went into wrestling. He rose to the top of the WWF, and then he decided to branch out into movies. And even within movies, he didn't just do action. He's also done comedy movies. He's also done drama movies. And the Tooth Fairy. Yeah, the Tooth Fairy, <laughs> where he's a Tooth Fairy on rollers, the hockey player. Something like that. <laughs> Uh, and on top of that, now he's got a new show on TNT, which is a reality show. And if you look at all the things The Rock does, it's he's taking all these different interests that he has and pursuing them, but making them all part of who Dwayne Johnson The Rock is, versus Hulk Hogan is still relying on the one thing that got him to a certain point to make that, make that who he is. One of the things that's very important about personal branding, when we talk about being already awesome, is this idea of diversifying yourself. Like if you ever heard of investors say diversify your portfolio, well, think of your life as a portfolio and diversify your interests. Um, because, and, and this isn't to say, like, obviously Hulk Hogan is a successful person. I'm not trying to say he's not successful. He's made millions of dollars over his career. He became a you know, household name in the he 80s. He opened Pasta Mania, man. <laughs> uh, you know, and he became a household name in the 80s of wrestling, but think when you think about the type of person you want to be, think about do you want to be defined by your job or do you want to be defined by who you are as a person? And you can there's two very different routes for that. The, the one we buy into and the one we invest ourselves in is we want people to know us as people, not as what we're doing for one moment of time. And, and this goes across, like you look at, um, let's say, rappers, like people that get stuck in, in, their, in their one thing. So Vanilla Ice, right? He cannot escape that one brand that he created in the 80s, no matter how cheesy the 80s look today. He still is Vanilla Ice. And so the goal is this whole evolution of your brand over time, it never should just be one point and that's it. Um, like, I wear these glasses on Guy Ferrari or whatever his name is, and that's it. Like, he, cha he takes that off, he's no longer that brand. Now, there is positives to that if you want these short-term boosts, but in the long-term of, you know, regular day-to-day -day life, meeting people, creating a life you love, that's where your personality needs to shine through. And if you look at these caricatures, I mean, it's pretty, pretty significant how different people are looking at The Rock versus how people are looking at Hulk Hogan so many years later. He even, you know, I had a friend last year, he was in the Tampa airport, and like, with his phone secretly in the car. Hulk Hogan was actually sitting in the terminal, or like, you know, the, what do you call the terminal crossman. And he, he sends this picture to me, and he goes, Hulk Hogan travels dressed as Hulk Hogan. <laughs> He's wearing a red cutoff and a red bandana. <laughs> Not know that. <laughs> oh, man. Put the same thing on 
that every day for 40 years. <laughs> so this brings us to our next point, which is inward, outward, and onward. So this is the framework for the art of awesome. It's about, and it's a cyclical framework. So you don't just look inward, you don't just look outward, and you don't just look onward, as we kind of mentioned in the earlier slides. You need to have all three. And if you want to go into a little more detail. Yeah, the idea is that, um, as we kind of put it in a triangle, one is always feeding into the other. And as Martin said, it's this ongoing iterative process. Um, what we often do, I think, when we make mistakes, when we want to try something, we first go to the immediate last step instead of thinking, okay, what are the things that I should be looking at before even trying that? What we end up doing is we try something, we don't like it, we get frustrated with it. Like, for instance, I remember um, a few years ago, I was like, okay, I want to start blogging. And I was like, okay, well, I'm into, I was, at the time, I was a senior at Paul. I was like, okay, well, I want to really be known in the marketing field. I also like, kind of like sports. So it became this like business and sports blog. And then I wrote, I, you know, you get really excited, you have that, like, that high initially. And I wrote this awesome first post, wrote a second one a few weeks later, wrote a third one a few weeks after that, and then five months later, I wrote post four or post five. <coughs> and a lot of times we fall into that trap of like, yeah, it sounds exciting at the time, but then it just patterns out because we don't take the time to think about who are we actually in this situation and is it something that we would want to invest our, our time and our emotions in long term. I ended up shutting down that blog about a year and a half ago because I hadn't written anything in over a year. Versus when you take the time to actually learn about yourself and who you are, which is inward, <clears throat> then learn about who are the people around you who can help you enhance who you are or get you to a certain point that you want to be at, which is outward, and then make the decisions to what do I want to do from here, then you start to make more positive decisions for yourself and do things that help you be enhance that awesome thing. And it isn't to say you're not gonna get that fun idea and you're gonna get all excited and you know create a logo if you're a designer. If you're like me, uh, purchase way too many URLs on a weekly basis. Um, but it, it's always once you have that initial push, taking a step back and saying, why? Always asking yourself why. Being that little kid in your head who's just gonna keep saying, you know, why is the sky blue? Well, because, you know, the air. Well, why? And it just keeps going until your like, brain is about to explode, uh, trying to figure out the universe. But once you have this framework, this inward, this outward, this onward framework, you can better understand yourself so you can see an opportunity that maybe sounds really cool. And this happens all the time, where someone's like, hey, you wanna go to this, you know, this party, right? To, to use a very simple example. And you'll say yes, you'll immediately say yes if you're a yes person. Or, hey, do you want to come to um, this event or go on this vacation or whatever the case may be? And most people just impulsively say yes because they think being there is what matters versus knowing why you're there and being purposeful about the things that you choose in your life. So if you go into, let's say, a blog and you just say, I want to be in social media, and you start blogging about social media, and that's all you blog about, and all your followers are social media bloggers, and all the people you follow are on social media. Well, what happens you know, five, 10 years down the road when you're so burnt out on social media you don't want to even hear the word tweet, and all you have surrounded yourself with is social media content? And so that's going back to this diversification aspect, which is really understanding why you're in the area in the first place and getting maybe a little deeper and then bringing in other ideas to enhance it. So it's not maybe just social media, Maybe what you're interested in is connecting with people online. And then you can start researching online connections, and then you can go into Match.com, you can go into all the different areas of online connections and bring those together into one place, which then allows you later down the road to maybe choose a silo once you've kind of explored all the different areas. How many of you by show of hands are undergraduate students? Okay. When you can you see me able to graduate the next one? Um, if you're going to hit a point in your career where you're like, man, this just isn't what I thought it was, or you're going to change your mind and want to pivot either a little or pivot a lot. I mean, even I did, I hit that point in the last year where I was like, you know, I graduated college being this like gung-ho marketing guy, and I was like, yeah, I want to be known in the 
marketing field, a lot of work. Everything there is about marketing, and I was just like, I'm freaking tired of marketing, and I don't care about that this brand is doing this. In fact, I kind of hate it. But because I was able to, along the way, make sure that I was uh, cultivating other interests of mine and doing things outside of marketing, you know, I, I quit my job in December with no prospects and nothing lined up. And where a lot of people were telling me, like, you're crazy, I was like, no, I'm just doing me, and I'm pretty comfortable with this because I know I have met the right people in the last few years, and I have taken the time to learn different things about myself that just because I don't have something immediate doesn't mean that something's not going to come up in the next few months. And, you know, I'm into 21 days now of fun employment, as I call it. But, and that's why, that's what I, that's my pressure, right? It's not that I'm like unemployed and I'm like, oh, this, is, this, is, this sucks. I'm like, no, I'm fun employed. And the interviews I've been going on, I talk about it with this like panache and like this excitement where I'm like, yeah, like I went to Belize earlier this year, I'm going to visit my brother in Philadelphia for a week next week. Like, this is this awesome time. And part of the diversification of yourself, when you go on job interviews, this is a little bit of a tangent that's related. You never want to just rely on what your, the experience your employer provided you to talk about who you are and the things that you've accomplished. An interview I had on Monday, 15, I kid you not, 15 minutes of the interview was talking about how I'm a rapper and how do I approach writing a song. And I, I mean, this was a job interview, right? Nothing that we talked about, it was an hour and a half long, nothing that we talked about was about my three and a half years of experience at the ad agency where I worked. So it's important to understand that like, you, you can't just be looking to your employer to provide the satisfaction or the validation or the fulfillment that you're going to get out of your life. It's about looking inward first to the interests that you have and then working on those interests or pursuing them so that when you hit, everyone's going to hit a career crossroads. And if it's not a career crossroads, you're going to hit some type of personal crossroads. You have things in your life that you can rely on to draw from experience. You didn't just say, what I did from nine to five for the last three years is who I identify as, and that's the only thing that you'll ever know about me. Yeah, and, and it's kind of interesting too, because um, back when I was at DePaul, and I was just a few floors away from here, interviewing for my first job, I remember I showed up to that interview, and I still keep in touch with this guy who interviewed me to today, and I walked in, and the first thing he noticed was I had a cast on my hand, and he was like, What's, what's going on with your hand? And I was like, oh, uh, I went skiing over the weekend and, and bit it really hard. And he was like, I just went skiing this weekend. And we talked about skiing, and I don't know much about skiing, but we talked about skiing for like half the interview. And then a good other portion of the interview was about my ska band, which is the most random thing I put on a resume just for fun. And every interview I went on talked about the most random pieces of what I thought my brand was at the time. And now, as Raj said, we're making that the forefront of our brand. The things in your life that are interesting, that make people interested, and tell good stories. Because from there, you can then get down to, well, of course I can do an Excel sheet, or of course I can sell to a consumer. Um, but that's not the reason you want to work with me every day. The reason you want to work with me every day is because we can talk about adventure time for five hours. I don't know. <laughs> and the first step to doing this is to know who you really are. Separate the voices of who people are telling you you are and replace them with the voices of who you actually are. Now, it's funny I say that because now we're gonna say, we're gonna recommend going to take a, six, a personality test um, which will tell you who you are. But the point is that you can argue with that test. You can question the results. You can adapt it to your life and look at the percentage breakouts in order to understand which things actually apply and then use that to better define your goals. So this one in particular that we have the screenshots from is something called 16personalities.com. It's a free version of the MBTI. I highly recommend it. Myers-Briggs. Yeah, Myers-Briggs. Um, oh, 16 personalities? 16, 16 16personalities.com. And this has been just a dramatic shift for me in the past even six months. Um, it started with, I've always been interested in this kind of stuff, um, but it started with my girlfriend and I both taking this test. And um, she actually is an ENFP, which is what Raj is as well, and I'm an ENTJ. 
And there's a lot of clashing that happens between those personalities, but there's also a lot of support that happens between those personalities. And so once you can understand that, you can kind of drill down into your personality, who you truly are, and who the people around you are, you get less defensive and you're able to connect and you're able to really understand who you are and who they are and help support each other. And I'm a real nerd, so I also took this home and had my whole family take it over Christmas. Um, and then uh, in telling someone at work about it, um, about how weird I am having my mom take a personality test, um, <laughs> My boss asked me to then have the entire account team take it. So now our whole account team at my office has taken it, and it's been tasked on me to now become the person who understands everyone's personalities at the company and helps people communicate better. And that's been something I've always wanted to do in my role, but have never really found a way to you know, bring that up during performance review. And I had a five minute conversation yesterday with uh, someone in my company about how do we get this to the rest of the company? How do we spread this out to Pittsburgh and to Boston and bring everyone together? Because we have an internal test similar to this, but it's not as robust. And so highly, highly recommend checking out 16 personalities. Part of what this will help you do, a lot of it will help you do, and specifically this specific website, uh, which is their version of that Myers-Briggs test, the way that they word the results that they give you about your personality, right? Like these are just letters. They represent different things. If you're not familiar with the test, like everyone, there's one of 16 different personality types you could be represented by four different uh, series of letters. Introvert, uh, extrovert, intuitive, and sensing. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. I only remember my own. I'm an ENTJ. <laughs> uh, thinking or feeling, and judging or perceiving. Um, again. The, and the, specifically the way that they word the results, you're going to read it and be like, this is scary how accurate this is. They're gonna give you instances of like, if you were in this situation, this is how you'd react. You'd be like, oh my God, it is how I'd react. Yeah. <laughs> Chill on your spine, <laughs> that's good. Uh, so going back to this concept of, of inward, this is a great step in figuring out who you are in the first place. Uh, another thing that works very well, and this was kind of the genesis for us doing anything for Idea 11 with Art of Awesome in the first place was this concept called uh, the Golden Circle. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, view this TED Talk. It's by a guy named Simon Sinek. S-I-N-E-K is Sinek. Uh, just Google Simon Sinek Golden Circle and it'll come up. And it's a, it's a talk about how great leaders inspire action. But more than that, it's a talk about how people operate in the first place. Uh, the basic model, as Martin's drawing up here, is that everyone functions, every human functions on three basic levels. And it's a concept that's actually included in biology. If you draw three concentric circles, the outermost layer is what, the second layer is how, and the innermost layer is why. Most people communicate from the outside in. Think about your job. Everyone knows what they do. Most people know how they do it, but very few people know why they're doing it in the first place. However, the very successful leaders, businesses, and people over time are the ones that do the reverse. They start with why, then they go to how, and then they tell you what. So it's at, by the time they get to what are they actually even doing in this moment of time, it's all just kind of uh, frosting for the fact that they've made this emotional connection with you because they've they've reached out to you on the grounds of their why. Uh, one example we like to use is in the 2008 uh, presidential election. <coughs> you guys remember what Barack Obama's campaign poster said? Yes, we can. Change, right? What did McCain say? Who won? <laughs> and granted, there are a lot of things that go into winning a presidential election, however, Many people, myself included, voted for Obama on the grounds of, this is a guy who I feel like just gets me. This is a guy who I feel like I could go and have a beer with. And he started this whole platform platform on posters that said change, and I think other ones said hope oh, and believe. He didn't go out there and say, like, first message, let's pull out of Iraq, or let's, do, let's reform healthcare, any of that stuff. That was all after he had gotten you to buy into his message of change. And when you think about your own life, you can walk up to someone and say, hi, my name, 
My name is Raj, I work in marketing. If someone is not interested in marketing, the conversation is dead. Or accounting, or law, whatever it is. If and God forbid them, you walk in, you're like, I'm an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That happens so much, and it just drives me crazy. It's like, and it, and no, there's something interesting. Right, and it's the fight club idea. You are not your job, right? You are so much more than that. So watch this video, and then we also, um, Gina, if you have an email list of this, we can send this out to you guys. Uh, we've put together a worksheet of about 10 questions you can ask yourself to help you find your own why and your own how. And our adaptation of the Golden Circle is that your why is your life's motivation, and your how is your purpose. When you understand these things about yourself, it is this insane light bulb brain exploding moment where you kind of like just see how everything in your life connects and what you can do moving forward. So for instance, uh, when I go up to people now, and granted situations are different, but when people ask me what I do, because it's a question that you just can't escape, rather than say, oh, I, I work in marketing, or oh, I, I do idea limit, I just say, I'm a storyteller. That's interesting, what do you mean by that? And then I can take the conversation in really whatever direction I want to take it. And that's how you start to have more constructive conversations instead of, I'm a marketer. Well, I took accounting when I was a major in college. So we have a good question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you said why was motivation. What was what was the what? Uh, was why is motivation? How is purpose? How is purpose? Okay. And what is just the tangible things that are in your life? So your job and your hobbies. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, and a really good example of how this benefits your life. Um, back when I was, you know, working in the suburbs and uh, saving some money, living at home. I would bring up things to my family and be like, oh, I want to try this. And I'd always be met with, that's weird. Why would you do that? And I never really had a good answer. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go run a marathon. And every time I'd go for a run, I'd get, do you really want to be doing this? It's a marathon. Why aren't you home for dinner? Like, why are you out running? And I'd be like, ah, oh, because. Because I need to, you know, this is just something that I think I need to do. But I had no reason why. So every time I was asked, I would get more disheartened by it. And every time I go running, it's hard to run 10 miles when you're just like, I don't know why I'm doing this. It's really crazy. Um, and then just, you know, uh, a little bit last year, after going through, you know, two, three years of all this different stuff, trying these crazy things, um, I bought a ticket to Iceland on impulse, actually, after Raj went to Costa Rica with this group called Under 30 Experiences, which we highly recommend. We just came back from Belize with them. Um, but they, I, I, bought, I impulsively bought this ticket to Iceland. I never travel. It's not even something that I think about until I went on this trip. And uh, the next day, I was calling my mom, and she goes, "So what's going on?" I was like, "Oh, I just impulsively bought a ticket to Iceland." She goes, "Yeah, that makes sense." <laughs> you do weird things. You're just, you know, you like to. The moment you get your parents to say that makes sense is a win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and so asking these questions and really getting down to the root, it, it number one, motivates you, and number two, silences some of the haters. Yeah. Um, what's uh, Yeah, move on to outward well. So, outward is the next step of this. When you know who you are in any given situation, you can also look at, at your, yourself in a particular situation. Um, once you know who you are, then you go on to outward, which is, what is my environment? Who are the people around me? And are they helping me do the things I want to do or hurting in the things that I want to do? Um, one of those concepts we really subscribe to is this, if you're familiar with it, it's like you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Show of hands if you guys are you familiar with that concept. All right, so a handful of you. Basically the concept is if you're at the top of your average, so the five people, and this is literally the time. How much time are you spending with these folks? If you're at the top of the average, so let's say your five friends sit around every night watching TV and drinking beers, going to the same bars, and you're at least going out to a networking event once a week, they're bringing down your average because they're gonna always encourage you to come do what they're doing versus what you actually wanna do. And so what you wanna do is you wanna start surrounding yourself with people who up your average consistently and it's not to say like, oh, never see those friends, but maybe don't spend every day of the week with them um, and start prioritizing your time in ways that are more productive. Mm -hmm. On top of that, you can also use the, the people around you to help you 
further fine tune that inward stage. So you may take that personality test, you may watch that golden circle video, and you may work on that worksheet that we'll send out uh, and have a sense of who you are. But it's also helpful to fine tune who you are. And a lot of what will help that is just reaching out to the people around you and asking them a few questions. What word comes to mind when you think of it? What am I great at? What's a story that you have of me that you really enjoy? Ask them things like that. Do it via email, grab a beer with them, have coffee with them, call them, whatever it might be. But when you start to see how the world around you sees you, then you can start to say, okay, is that, is that really who I want to be for this world, or do I want to be something else? Yeah. That actually brings up something I wanted to ask about. Um, yeah. It seems like a lot of personal branding has to do with perception and kind of like how people see you or view your brand. So how do you manage that or kind of gain insight to it to kind of work it to your advantage? That's a really good question. So that's where this becomes really important because the first stage is all about you understanding yourself in your language, right? And so if I think that I'm, you know, a highly driven, like whatever, overachiever, whatever the word, the buzzword of the day I want to use that I, I found on the internet, and I go up to someone and I say, I'm a progressive thinker, they're going to be like, what are you, what are you, what? What are you talking about? I think that you do the same thing every day. I don't, I don't know what you do in your personal time. Versus what this step is all about, which is asking people what they, what they think of you and what their words are, and then internalizing that with your own perception of yourself. So now you have all of your jargon and all the things you think of yourself and your stories that you think are epic and the, and the things that you're interested in and passionate about. And then you look at the people around you and if they say, oh, you're the most organized person I know, or oh, you are the person that's always there to support their friends, or you're the person in whatever the thing may be, now you have their language and your language and you can start crafting the way you talk about yourself much clearer and, and, and because you're using the language that people are already using about you, you can fine tune and guide that conversation. Um, there's, in, in the questions that we ask in, in this uh, link that we'll send out, uh, it, it definitely gets granular in the way that you can break it out. And again, so it's a combination of that plus this average of five thing. So are you, are you using your time in a quality way? I'm not trying to say disown your friends if you feel like they're not a good vibe, but reprioritize how you spend your time. And I found in my own life that I was you know, hanging out with the same friends from college, we were going to the same bars, staying in the same you know, core of people, and I was like, well, this is no way for me to like pursue the things that I want to pursue. So I started just readjusting how I was spending my time. Instead of going with them every weekend, it's like, okay, every few weekends I'll hang out with them. Um, and instead I spend my time doing things like traveling or going to this crazy thing in the South Loop called Locked in a Room with a Zombie, <laughs> which is pretty fun. <laughs> and it's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> well, and that's exactly the point. It's, you are not actually able to control what people think of you. You're not able to control how they talk to you, to other people. You're not able to control any of that. What you are able to control is what you put out. And one of the things, the core of all of this, is the fact that every single person has a personal brand, whether they like it or not. You have a profile on LinkedIn. You have a Facebook. You have an, an email address that says something or about you. Or you just have to talk to you. Yeah, or you just have walking into a room, this is what I'm wearing, this is how I talk. But if you're not being cognizant of what you're putting out there, you're not able to guide what you're putting out there. And I mean, a, a prime example um, is going back a few years when I, when I would just kind of like or back in college, like, all right, so college, you don't really think about what you're wearing every day, right? Maybe, maybe it fall a little bit more because, you know, we're businessy, we're in the city, and, and all that good stuff. But I look at pictures of my little brother's Facebook, and he's just like, how come none of these places are hiring me? I'm like, every picture of you is at a frat with a beer. Like, <laughs> what, what are you expecting? Like, they're going to Google you. They're going to look you up. Google Images pulls anything that has your name on it. And the problem, I mean, it's a problem, but it's also something that's awesome because that means that people can start formulating, can start having that conversation before you ever walk in the room. And so you guys saw our ad for this today, and you had assumptions about what this would be. And it wasn't just personal branding, one-on-one. -on -one. It's something a little different. 
and you can start crafting the stories in people's minds prior to them walking in the room. And this picture, oh sorry, this picture here is a band called Walk Off the Earth. They're kind of a big hit on YouTube right now, um, but one of the videos that got them really big was they did a cover, and they all played the same guitar. It was just one guitar, five people, all playing different things and hitting it different ways. And it was the most, it like blew my mind. And, and now they have ones where they had a huge guitar and they had like all these crazy like nonstop videos. And you just look at this and you're like, all right, this guy who started the band said, I need to surround myself with the right people to create things in my head. And he found these people and actually married this one. And now he has this band where he's able to fulfill all the ideas in his head with people who are just as driven as him and push him just as hard. The next step, because we've got a few minutes left, so let's get uh, onward. And this is the, the I would call it final, but because it, it's a cyclical process, this is more so just part of the three-step three onward process. It's onward. When you have the knowledge of yourself inward, and you have the knowledge of the people around you and the environment you want to create outward, think about what can you do <laughs> moving forward knowing those two things about yourself. Um, you can start to explore and test ideas in your life. I was telling this table over here before we started that uh, we don't think of Idea Lemon as a company by any means. It is a platform for us to test and explore different ideas and things we want to try in our life. Um, figure out what are platforms you can create for yourself. It doesn't have to be this big broadcast and name like Idea Lemon. It doesn't have to be a podcast. It could be journaling. It could be just talking to your friends about and the friends who are going to enhance you about the things that you want to be doing and just go out and try them. Um, one of the things that I think we always hold ourselves back from is we think about the absolute outcome of something so we never even try it. So um, we look at, for instance, like um, you say, oh, I want to start a business, but then you're like, ah, but I'm not an entrepreneur. But that's not how you should think, because you don't become an entrepreneur until you've had a series of successful trials and failures, and you get to a certain point. Instead, think about what's like the immediate next step, or what's the first thing you can think about yourself to help you start doing something. So instead of, I'd like to start a business, but I'm not an entrepreneur, think instead of, I'd like to start a business because I am someone who has an idea that can help someone. And actually, a prime example of this is something that we're doing right now, where we started recording a podcast. Now, we're only a couple recordings in, and we haven't released anything, but the idea of the podcast is to ask your, is each episode we ask ourselves a life-changing question, and we bring in a friend and we just talk about it for an hour. And it, we get these questions from Forbes, from books, from anywhere, but the whole concept is, you know, we want to have good conversations with people, but it's awkward to go up to a friend and say, hey, want to talk about life-changing questions? <laughs> But if you say, hey, well, I'm recording this podcast, we think it'll be a lot of fun if you come join us, have a beer, have a coffee, whatever, um, and we'll just talk about this for an hour, share your experiences, and now all of a sudden we've got it on record, we have that person more involved in our life, we have something interesting to look back on, so to reference five years down the road, when I go, what was I doing back that year? Oh, I had that, that thing. And a prime example of surrounding yourself with the right people Personally, I'm a planner. I, I am so focused on every detail. I need to know where this is going. I need to know how we're monetizing it. I need to know all that stuff. And Raj is all about ideas and, and starting things and inspiring people. And without you just putting a phone down and not telling me you were recording, we never would have recorded the first episode because I would have waited until we had a brand and a name and all these other things. And so if you surround yourself with the right people, they're going to push you unexpectedly to do new things. And we were in Belize and, and had a podcast with the founder of the company of the of the company that we went there with. And so different things, like I didn't really know that guy very well, but after that podcast, I feel comfortable reading out. Mm -hmm. It's important to think about, uh, one of the words we use a lot is, what are the excuses you can use to try things and meet the people that you want to meet? So like, um, you could reach out to someone that you want to meet on LinkedIn and be like, hey, I really admire your work, would you mind getting coffee sometime? Or you could say, hey, if in, in Martin's case, hey, I run this group called Launchpad where we meet every other week, and you came up in our discussion. I would love to get your, your opinion on this subject. And that's a much more powerful way to be able to connect with someone. Be like, oh, wow, I came up in this discussion group. Yeah, 
let's get together. And it gives tangible feedback loops, because that leads to an interview with them, which leads to you bringing it back to your group, which leads to, oh, hey, here's a follow-up email of what my group thought of what you said. And it continues that discussion. It continues your personal brand. It continues growing your connections. Another important point of Onward, and it'll be the last point we make, essentially, is in order to, one of the member one of the points we made was constantly be evolving. In order to help with that, create what we like to call like mastermind groups. Uh, if you think about, I mean, I'm sure you've gotten this advice before where someone will say, okay, you want to be successful in this field, find whoever who's been successful, reach out to them and get their advice, get, you know, have coffee with them, have an informational interview with them, whatever. That is valuable, yes. What is arguably as valuable, if not more valuable, is find people who are at the same stage or near the same stage as you and help each other build upon each other. Um, if you look at these successful things that have happened over time, they started from a group helping each other. Uh, in the mid-1800s, the artists we know now is of the Impressionist era, Cezanne, Renoir, Degas, Renoir, Degas, those people, they started doing what they did because they were trying to get into this art show in Paris every year, but because their art was different, they kept getting denied. And what they did was every day, every day they just met at this coffee shop and thought, how do we get into this art show? And out of a bunch of conversations, they realized, screw it, let's hold our own art show. And then they did, and now we think of them as some of the best painters of all time. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler, they didn't meet each other when they were already successful. They met each other as they were on the way up. Find people who are also on the way up and figure out how you can help each other because that's where you'll have a lot of success in getting fresh ideas for yourself and not just following the path that someone else did. You'll be able to carve your own path. So to sum it up, make sure that you're merging all the things in your life that you're interested in and try and find the commonalities. Surround yourself with the right people and constantly evolve that thinking. <laughs> you need to know yourself in order to understand which friends and which people you need around you. And once you have those two things, you are primed to create the goals and, and the groups that you want to pursue. That's the art of awesome. <laughs>